Well, how y'all are? It's your buddy George Jones over at the Bergen Gun Range with my fourth try at making a gun video. I've got half dozen bloopers and you know I'm back over here trying it again. Uh, the gun we have today is a gun that's been around for a long time. This is the Model 200 Rock Island Armory. Now this is Rock Island Armory in the Philippines. It's got a Rock Island logo right here on it. Uh, first of all, I got this gun a couple of three weeks ago and purchased it for myself. So it wasn't a loaner gun or anything like that. It was a gun that I bought basically to have an extra little 38 around the house because the wife is good at using a 38. Uh, so I thought it'd be cool to have an extra little gun. Plus, I still do firearms training, and some people, you know, don't have a gun. So, you know, you need a reference collection. Anyway, I bought this gun. I bought it used. Uh, I think I paid $180 for it as a used gun. This is the Model 200. Now, the 200 and this der derivation of Rock Island revolver has been around for a long time. I can remember in the 1970s when I was a teenager seeing this gun advertised in the old shotgun news. Uh, it, it's still around. The shotgun news is still around, but it's more of a magazine with a lot of ads as opposed to being an industry trade paper, which is what it was in the day. Um, they looked an awful lot like a Colt Diamondback. And... I think they got into a lawsuit with Colt over it because the Diamondback was in production in those days. Uh, it has some similarities to a Colt still today. It has a Colt style lockup that you had to pull to get it to, to get it to open up. And the, internally, the lockup is a plunger in the cylinder face that corresponds to a uh, get it in the sunlight there where it's not in a shadow which is a hole in the back of the uh, drive star as opposed to a pin which is just exactly the opposite of a Smith & Wesson and I think it's a pretty good lockup design uh, it has the same style crane ejector and so forth on it it has a Colt style hammer which is very reminiscent of a uh, older Colt revolver. Uh, and I think overall they've tried to make this gun today. I can remember when the shroud went all the way out to the end. <laughs> today they've tried to make the gun look somewhat like a Colt Viper, which was a very short production run gun that Colt produced in the 80s, 70s and 80s. Or maybe even the 60s. I don't know. I didn't research the Viper. But it kind of looks like one. Okay, so the big question is, how does it shoot and how does it function? Well, to begin with, when I bought this gun, it had the small grip on it that typically comes on the Rock Island 2-inch barrel 38. And I found that uh, that that grip configuration is just completely unserviceable. I mean, it's fat down here and skinny up here, and it needs to be fat up here and skinny down there, like this one is, you know. So after doing myself a small injury, trying to shoot it, that became a blooper. So then I went out and found me this grip to go on there. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had some of these in the uh, down at uh, Kenny Fort Guns and Ammo. Um, just stumbled across it, didn't even know it was there. All right then. So I test fired it, and this grip is very acceptable. So if you buy one of these guns, two inch or four inch, it needs to have this grip configuration on it. You know. All right, let's load her up and shoot her a little bit. Shoot about twelve rounds out of it. I've got a, uh, I've got a uh, bullseye target sitting on the little porta stand down there at uh, 12 yards. Let's see how she shoots at 12 yards. 
which is 30, 34 feet. That would be acceptable defensive range. All right, let's give her a whirl here and see how she shoot a tapes. All right, here we go. Let's try six on double action. Get that gun right there where the people can see the gun. There, that's much better. Right where the people can see the gun. Let's give it about six on double action here and see where we get. There we go. That's very nice. Now these are reloads. These are 38, these are 38, 158 grain semi wad cutter rounds that I loaded for competition last year and had quite a few of them left over. Uh, I think they're 4.5 grains of uh, red dot with a CCI standard primer. Let's try a single action. See how we do on single action. Okay. All righty. Here we go. Let's go look at it and see what it looks like. And I can see right now that it's fairly acceptable accuracy. Uh, I won't be doing any bullseye matches with this gun, that's for sure. But uh, on the other hand, you know, if you had a guy coming through your back door with very ill intent on his mind, this would probably be a pretty handy gun to have. Probably a pretty good handy gun to have. We've got to do the size around here. Now, a lot of people have gotten away from... We'll talk about this for a minute. A lot of people have gotten away from... The good old basic revolver, you know, and, you know, when I was coming up in law enforcement, the revolver was king. Oh, yeah, you'd see somebody with a 1911 every once in a while in a Western style rig, or you'd see somebody with a Model 39 or a Model 59, <coughs> but typically everybody carried revolvers. So... People have gotten away from basic revolver techniques, you know. So, how does a revolver really work? How do you really use a revolver? Well, I'll give you a little marksmanship tip. How to use a revolver. First of all, you got to get it loaded, okay? So, what you do is, you find your ammunition, wherever you've got it, and you hold your muzzle down. That in turn helps you load the gun using gravity, okay? Gravity is important. Now, once you've got the gun loaded, the next thing is you have a cylinder lock right here. And a lot of times when you shut a revolver's cylinder, okay, you wind up with the indexes you wind up with the cylinder lock between the index points so what you do is you lock it guy shut with your palm and then you push it one way or the other as you lock it in there to get it into index okay okay 
Now, you shoot the gun. Pow, 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 pow. Pow, 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 pow. Now it's time to unload the gun. What do we do? All right. You reach up there and you hit your cylinder latch. This one pulls back. Take your two fingers, put them through there, and get a hold of the gun. Like this. Okay. Turn the gun upside down, muzzle pointed up. Punch your cartridges out. That uses gravity to help you unload the gun. Then reorientate it in your hand and start your reloading process with the muzzle down. Now, okay, where, where do you carry your ammunition? In a revolver scenario, you carry your ammunition, your reload, on the same side of your body you carry the gun because you're going to put it into your non-firing hand to empty it or to reload it, okay? And then you get your grip back on your gun, palm it back to index, and you're ready to go again. Okay? That's just a little basic primer on revolver operation. Okay? In the case of an automatic, you'd carry your ammunition on the opposite side that you carry your gun. Because you pull your gun out, and you're going to keep it in this hand, your shooting hand. And you're going to go to your support hand to get your ammunition and replenish the gun. Okay. All right then. Uh, like, take, share, fire, commentate, and subscribe. Leave me an old dollar in the Patreon bucket if you want to on the way out the door. If you don't want to, I'll keep right on making content for you. Uh, y'all have a blessed 2A day. God bless y'all. Keep being careful. This thing's going to start passing us by pretty soon. And then we can worry about our other problems. Join the NRA. You're going to need them. You know. Nobody else has as good a gun lobby, uh, besides what you think or don't think about them, or what propaganda you have heard. Join the NRA. If we get 75 million people to join the NRA, we wouldn't have any problems. All right, then. We'll see y'all.